I still remember the exact moment when I discovered that my brother had an intellectual disability. I was nine years old, and we were on a family vacation, when Ricky, who was 18 at the time, threw a tantrum in a fancy restaurant, forcing us to cut our night a little short. Episodes like these happened every once in a while, and I didn't know why. So, back at the hotel, I finally built up the courage to ask my dad what was up with Ricky, and when was he going to get better. Every morning, Ricky took these two pills before breakfast, and my reasoning was that with the help of that medicine, he'd eventually become normal. But I could have been more wrong. And when my dad told me that Ricky had Asperger's syndrome, an incurable condition, and would be that way forever, I was absolutely devastated. See, the thing is, up until that point, I had this idea in my head that, yes, Ricky had his quirks here and there, but he had been to a doctor. He was going to get better. And intellectual disability was a scary phrase to me because it made it sound like there was something wrong or damaged about my brother, and there really wasn't. To clarify, Asperger's syndrome is an autism spectrum disorder that is characterized by difficulties in social interaction and nonverbal communication, as well as repetitive patterns of behavior and interests. This means that people with Asperger's often have trouble picking up on social cues, such as eye contact or body language, and have a tendency to become obsessed with things that they like, causing them to be sucked up into their own world. These symptoms are usually accompanied with a decreased level of maturity and difficulty learning. Now that I knew that Ricky's condition was permanent, the dynamics of our relationship changed immediately. The line between the role of big brother and little brother had always been blurred, but now I felt like it was my job to protect Ricky. And I wish I could have seen how naive I was being, because looking at his disability as something that was a problem and something that needed to be fixed could not have been more counterproductive. And sure, growing up with him was a struggle at times, because I had all these expectations for what a big brother was supposed to be. And I have to say I'm ashamed to admit that every once in a while, I would wish and pray that one day he'd wake up like everyone else. For a couple of years, I tried to correct him when his behavior wasn't conforming to what I considered normal or acceptable. And that only led to us growing apart. I was so focused on how he should be and how I thought he should be that I never took the time to truly appreciate all that he already was. And because of this, we often fought over silly things. And I was too young and too blind to realize that it didn't have to be that way. Now, that isn't to say that me and him didn't have our fair share of good times, because Ricky is probably the most loving and lovable person in my life, and I couldn't have asked for a better big brother and role model. But in hindsight, I realized that the problems and fights between us had nothing to do with him and everything to do with me. A couple years ago, Ricky joined Special Olympics, and he was immersed in a community where he fit in and could thrive. His life was changed completely. He was brought out of his shell, and he quickly became the independent an outgoing person he is today. Whereas he used to spend his weekends alone at home, listening to music or watching television, now he was going out, partying with his friends, and going all over the place, traveling, competing in meets and tournaments. He even got his first job with the city of Doral Parks and Rec Department. However, more important than all of these accomplishments was his growth as an individual. He had goals and aspirations now, and he had acquired the tools and determination to pursue them. And to him, Asperger's was just another obstacle waiting to be overcome. Watching his transformation from the outside made me realize that I had taken the wrong approach the entire time. I had tried to fit Ricky into this preconceived and faulty notion of what was normal when it's ridiculous because one, what exactly does normal mean? And two, who am I or anyone else to define what is and isn't normal? This just led to frustration for both of us. So again, 
I reached out to my dad and I asked him how he managed to have such an easygoing relationship with my brother. He told me that he simply didn't look to change the way that Ricky was. Instead, he realized that things seemed to run a lot more smoothly if he just stepped into Ricky's world. It was such a simple solution, yet my own arrogance had kept me from seeing it. And that was the key. I should have been playing along the whole time. Matter of fact, the second that I changed my mindset, the results were instant. If he wants to listen to the same song for two hours, that's fine. We'll jam out to it together. And if he's having a tough morning and in a bad mood, then I'll just bring up his favorite movie and I'll see his eyes light up again. Just the other day, he came to my room telling me about this new song he heard, Watch Me Whip. So naturally, as any good brother would do, I taught him the dance move that accompanies the song. And now hitting the whip is our favorite inside joke. And if we do fight, and what he's saying becomes somewhat illogical to me, I still take the time to listen. Because you'd be surprised how much quicker discussions can be resolved if you listen to the other person rather than speak. A valuable lesson was learned here. One that I'm in the process of applying to my life, and I invite you to apply to yours. Life becomes a whole lot easier when you stop measuring others by some arbitrary ruler, like what is normal or acceptable. Personal relationships have no place for such a closed-minded view. Instead, what we should be doing is genuinely trying to enter the world of those around us. I can stand here and hit you with cliche after cliche, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to empathy. I truly believe that the ability to empathize with others, not just to understand their situation, but to feel what they're feeling, is the key to stress-free and constructive relationships. The reasoning behind it is twofold. Firstly, it puts you both on the same page, making them comfortable and open to your input while allowing for both of you to fully enjoy and build up on the bond between one another. And secondly, it forces you to see things differently, perhaps leading to an alteration of your own perspective, while at the same time pushing you to be a better person in terms of understanding and compassion. Two characteristics that are at the core of what it means to be a human and that our society is in dire need of nowadays. So I leave you with this. Challenge yourself. You have your whole life to see the world through your own eyes, but you never know what you'll discover through the eyes of another. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oof. <laughs>